And when you are born of the Spirit of God, you enter into a class where they can't compete with you. Only knowledge will take you there. Nothing. When the devil knows that you are a star that will shine, he wants to cause a lot of calamities to stop you, not to go forward. Hallelujah. We are on the air again. I, Bishop Frank Ogaba of Ever Inclusive Faith Churches, invite you to join me always on Sunday on our Science and Wonders Apostolic and Prophetic Voice to the Nations, where there is healing, deliverance, salvation, miracle of all kinds on this very channel. Relax. Invite your friends. In the next 30 minutes, get ready to be blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Open the Bible and read with me. Somebody read it for me. Shout it if you can. For every child of God defeats this evil world. Every child of God defeats this evil world. This evil world. We achieve this victory through our faith. Read it again, honey. Every child of God does what? Defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. We achieve this victory through our faith. That is powerful. Which translation is that one? New NIV. New Living Translation. I like that scripture. He said, every child of God does what? Defeats. I like that word. Watch it. Defeats. He didn't say he's going to defeat. Can you read it again? For every child of God defeats this evil world. Stay there. He said, every child of God defeats this evil world. When the world becomes evil, it, it means there is the God of this world there too. So we have Satan, we have agent of Satan, we have all manner of things in this world. So every true child of God does what? Talk to me. Defeats this evil world. Which means defeat Satan, defeat his angels and cohorts, defeat every one of them. There is no negotiation about it. Which means when you are truly a child of God, you will win. Amen. The problem is that a lot of people, they go to church, but they are not children of God. Thank you there. You got it. They go to church. They love the pastor. They love the music. The pastor might be com coming from their village, from their town. They feel they are obligated to be in that church. But they are not born again. And if you look at their life, they are the one defeated. We know why. The reason why they are defeated is because they are not truly children of God. Because if you are truly a child of God, the Bible said you will defeat this evil world. You will defeat the man in the world and the demons and satanists in the world. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't look at me as if I'm not reading your Bible. Can you read it again, my dear? For every child of God defeats those evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. On Monday, I tried to do justice to it. I read it from the King James. And the King James, the old King James and the new King James, this is what he said. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Which means, when you are begotten by God, and I told you there are two types of birth. You are either born by your parents or you are born by God. All of us, we are born by who? Our daddy and our mommy. I don't care where they meet. Maybe they met in the streets. It doesn't really matter now. 
But we are the vehicle God used in bringing us into this world. Somebody transferred the sperm into a place where there was egg. And the sperm that left the man, we are so many. But only one succeeded in fertilizing the egg. That sperm count that comes out of a man contains a lot of children. Millions of children. From that zoom, zoom, zoom contains a lot of children. Millions of children. And they are all racing to fertilize one egg. Maybe two or three. That is why I say, lady, don't be careless. Wait till the real day you have your husband. So that nobody will just be fertilizing any egg you carry. I don't hear amen there. And the moment it goes, zoom. Millions of children on that spend counts goes running to win a race. Only one wins. Others comes out flowing out from the woman. That is why you keep cleaning and cleaning. Somebody say, I hear you. You're making me feel you are not mature to handle my preaching today. <laughs> but all the same, let me go ahead teaching. So for any man and woman to be born biologically, the person must have sex with a man. And that, that is why God ordained sex in what? Holy matrimony. It's a social man find a wife. He will obtain favor from the Lord. And when you are married and blessed, released by your Parents, two types of parents. We have what we call the biological parents. And who again? The spiritual parents. For believers. But the moment they bless you and release you to go and start living your home. You are supposed to be fertile. Every marriage here that have not had any proof of fertility from tonight. Catch fire. Receive seed. Receive productivity. In the name of Jesus. Every legal marriage has the backing of heaven to have children. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. So, we have two kinds of births. Introduction. We have the biological birth. That is how all of us came because a man met the wife or the girlfriend, whatever you call it, and they exchanged something. And the egg was fertilized and uh, one of the child, out of those millions of children, won the race. That is why if somebody tells you you are going to die premature, tell the person, I didn't die when I was in a sperm form. I won't die now. Yeah. I don't hear you. You, so, you, are, you are too quiet. Let me come down a little bit. If you did not die then, and you fought the race, all your mouths, go! And it was you that was born after nine months. Don't tell me the devil has power to eliminate you now. You won't die now. No matter how he throws his arrows, you won't die now. Can I prophesy on you? You will live to fulfill your prophetic destiny. The reason why God allow you to be born shall come to pass. Some of your amen lacks vitamin C. You won't then. You were born. Now, as you are growing up, you knew that this God that allowed you to be here, you are not pleasing him very well. 
You are not obeying him very well. You started finding out that in your life there is still a vacuum. Although you are born on earth here. You want to do right, you are doing evil. And when it's January like this, you want to do a new resolution. To stop smoking, to stop the bad things you are doing. Finally, the moment you do the resolution, after three days, you have broken it yourself. We are about to enter December now. There will be entry January. And people will be making a new year resolution. But after three days, they can't keep it. Why? Because there is another life. And if you read the second part of that scripture, it says anyone that is born of God overcomes. Somebody said overcomes. The devil. Which means when you are born again, you enter into a dimension of living a victorious life. Amen. It's the truth. I want to explain it very well so that you don't say you came to such a convention reigning as champions and you never understood this simple arithmetic. Anyone that is born again becomes what? An overcomer. Overcoming what? Satan, his demons, his agent, and human beings. Because some people don't believe you can make it in life. Some people will try all they can to stop you. Not to go forward in life. And you need a supernatural power to lift you when everybody hates you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need what? A supernatural lead to catapult you over so that you can reign in the midst of your enemies. And before the end of this year, all the enemies you've been having over years, you are going to so walk on their head, they won't know what happened to them. I say before the end of this year, Starting right now. You are going to trouble those who troubled you. Uh, Somebody is not here. I said before the end of this year. You are going to trouble those who trouble you. And they will be running from you even when you are not chasing them. Is there anybody here I'm talking to? All this why they've been chasing you. You'll be hearing voices. They'll be telling you will never succeed in life. After tonight. What do I say? After tonight. That will be over in your life. So the Bible said, can somebody read now King James for me? The Bible said, in that same place we're coming from, he that is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcome the world. Now listen. That English said overcoming, which means you keep overcoming. They will come the next day, you overcome. They come the other day, you overcome. You keep overcoming. They will keep trying. They will succeed. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. I just want to explain that first. Quickly go. I'm coming back here. Quickly go with me to the book of First John. John chapter 1, not 1st John, John, the gospel of John chapter 1. I want us to see something quickly. John chapter 1, are you there? It's like this podium need to come down here. Help me sir, bring it down. <laughs> I'm too up there, although I'm tall. Thank you sir. Uh-huh. Thank God for this podium. I just saw it. I liked it. I bought it. They were, they were selling for 2005. I looked at it like this. I said, this is good. I said, sir, give me a discount. He said, Bishop, if you give me cash right now, you'll get it for 1000 I just counted the money. Booza. And I took it. It's good for believers to have money. <laughs> if you have money, you can negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. After this meeting, you shall have money. Where are we? First John. John chapter 1. Not first John. John chapter 1. Somebody say John chapter 1. 
Okay, we're going to be reading just three, three verses. Verse 11, 12, and 13. Are you there? I told you, if you are going to be reigning as a champion, you need to be a friend of the word of God. There is no way you'll be reigning as a champion if you are not a friend of this Bible. It, it must be your best book ever. Don't tell me you read Sunday Sun more than you read the Bible. You are not ready yet. Are you in John chapter 1? Verse 11. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Is that in your Bible? Verse 12. But as many as received him, he gave them the right to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which we are born not of blood. Somebody say hallelujah. He said this one who receive who? Jesus. But he didn't mention Jesus there. No, he's talking about Jesus here. If you read from the beginning, you find that he's talking about Jesus. He said Jesus came to his own people. His own people in the flesh was the Jewish people. Is that not true? That is where he was born. When he told his people he is the Messiah, they rejected him. They did not receive him. A lot of Jewish people today, they believe that Jesus is not the Messiah. Messiah simply means savior. They still believe there is going to be a Messiah someday in the future. But people like Apostle Paul and Peter, they received the Messiah. So when he came, majority of people did not receive him. And the Bible said, even the high priest got letters to crucify him. That is to tell you the height of the hatred they had for him. They decided to kill him. And he died. He was buried. God raised him from the dead. The third day. He's alive forever. Yeah. Now, to us who have not seen him physically, but believed in him and welcomed him in our hearts, God gives us this power. Yeah. Are you following? Yeah. Now, the Bible said in verse 11, he came to his own, his own received him not. What did they do? Hatred was there. They killed him. They said, release the thieves for us. This man, we don't want him. Kill him. Crucify him. And they crucify the Lord of glory. In those days when they captured thieves, they hang them on the cross. So they put Jesus also in the cross. We don't want this man. What did he commit? Because he said he's the son of God. Which is true. He told them, I'm the light of this world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. They didn't like that. He told them, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. They didn't like that. He said, nobody can come unto my father except through me. They didn't like that. You make yourself equal with God. They rejected him. Get out. Away with this man. We don't want you. But he is the author of life. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and Omega. They rejected life. Now on the cross he stretched his hand for anyone all over the world to receive him. He identified with our long, lonely, defeated, sin, gripping nations. He said, I did it for you. So those who receive him, the Bible said in verse 12, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Somebody say power. power. 
to become. Power. Say it again, to become. Say that again, power to become a son of God. So, without you giving your life to Jesus, you will not have the power to become. The power to become only comes to those who receive him. Understand that please. Verse 12 said, but as many as receive him, to them God gave power. Somebody say power. power. To become sons of God. So they gave power to become sons of God. Which means from him dying for us, God was raising souls all over the world. So this kingdom of God, God is having people coming all over from India, China, all over. If they just receive Jesus, they will have the same right and privileges. It's not just for the South Africans only. It's for the Congolese. It's from the Ghanaians. It's from the, the Sesuanas. It's for everybody. As many as receive him. And the truth of the matter is the moment you receive him, you become one of the sons of God. You join yourself to a universal church. Now listen to me. I'm not talking about a universal church written like a name. I'm talking about the, the body of Jesus globally. It's good you understand that because if you don't receive him, you cannot become. If you don't receive him, you can never become what heaven wants you to become. Forget it. And in this area of the gospel, we cannot lower the standard. I don't care how much I need money. When it comes to this area, I can't lower it. You don't bargain this. It's only those who receive him that God gives power to become. Sons of God. You can imagine if you're a lady and you receive him, you become what? You don't become a daughter, you become a son of God. Because in the spirit we are sons. Amen. Now understand that. And if you read the next verse, after that verse 13, the Bible said, which were born not of blood. Somebody say blood. Your physical bed, your physical bed, blood was involved. Is that not true, man? When that man transferred the sperm to the place it's meant to be, what flows into you? It's part of blood. Is that not true? Don't look at me like talk to me now. You are, you are exchanging blood. That is why you have to be careful who you enter into a blood covenant relationship with. Don't let anybody fool you. You can receive all that the man has by just that one intercourse. All that a man is can enter you. And all that you are can enter the man. If the man was sick of any disease, he can enter you from that single intercourse. If the man was demon possessed, I can, if the man was having, I, I remember praying for a lady in Botswana. You remember that? And she said, she's coming from a kingdom called Zeus. And the lady says she has manifestation, different type of manifestation in her life. But she gave her life to Jesus. She was trying to disturb in the meeting the supernatural power that we carry. Subdued what was in her and delivered her. I see deliverance in the house tonight. I believe in deliverance. The Bible said here, not of blood. All of us, we are born of blood. Is that not true? And look at the next one. Not of the will of the flesh. For anybody to be born again physically, it must be the will of the flesh. A man must be having the feeling, a woman with the feeling. You understand that? It's the will of the flesh. Okay? 
and not of the will of what again? Will of man. But of God. Which means when you are born again, you are born of God. How does that really happen? Somebody got to hear the gospel. Believe it. Be ready to say, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And the minute you do that, transformation takes place in your spirit. Your body will still be looking the same. If you were having a mark before, before you gave your life to Jesus in the flesh, you'll still be having the mark. Okay? So, but that does not negate that you have not received a new life. The moment you receive Jesus, you are born by the Spirit of God into the family of God on earth. Somebody shout amen. amen. Do you understand this very well? Go back to John chapter 3. Introduction. Oh boy. I have a few minutes to go. <laughs> Say Muruti. John chapter 3. Are you there? Let's look at verse 5, 6, and 8. John chapter 3. Verse 5, 6, and 8. I read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, for this spiritual new birth to take place, you must be born of what? Of water. Someone shall water. And what again? Spirit. The spirit here is the big one. Which means the Holy Spirit must be involved. And the water must be involved. Is he talking about baptism here? No. This water. What is, it? What is the meaning of this water? The water here means the word of God. Which means you must hear the word of God. For the spirit of God to give birth to you. And that is why Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians 5, verse 26, talks about regeneration. Cleansing and washing of the water by the word. You see, you need to use the Bible to interpret the Bible. So this water here, what does it mean? Does it mean water baptism? No! In the church where I'm, I'm, I grew up from, my family came out from, the moment a child is born in a family, eight days old, they take it to church and they baptize him. And they give you a new name. And they call your name Frank or Francis. And they call you like that. And they pour water on your head and they baptize you. That is not what the Bible is talking about. Moreover, you are not supposed to be baptizing children. Why? Because they have not believed in Jesus yet. Are you still here? Did I catch you? Where am I now? Ephesians chapter 5. I want you to see that quickly. I say, Bishop Frank, ah, I did come here for so much word. You need to learn how to spend time in the word. Or else, no miracle. That is why people keep running from church to church. From crusade to crusade. And nothing is happening in their life. You need to know what God is saying in the Bible. So that your liberty will begin. Don't tell me you are lining up to just get a bowl of water for your miracle. No. You need to know what the Bible says. Are you the Ephesians chapter 5? 26. Read with me. It said that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So the word of God becomes the cleansing agent that God uses to warn you and to cleanse you. Did you see that? Also if you read John chapter 15 verse 3. It says you are clean by the word that I've spoken to you. Which means the word of God is the detergent. God uses to cleanse your spirit, soul and body. So that the Holy Spirit can do his work in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now. Have we look at these two scriptures, John chapter 15, verse 3. Let me read it. Verse 3 says, Now you are clean through the word I have spoken unto you. Which means somebody must have ears to hear the word of God to be cleansed. So I'm establishing that for you to truly be born again, you must hear the word of God, number one. For the Holy Spirit to draw you, you must hear 
what? The word of God. Because when the word of God comes, it exposes the attitude of your heart. You can repent because you are hearing the word of God. Is that not true? By the time you start saying, Lord, I'm really very sorry. I never knew I'm so, I'm like this. The Holy Spirit is having his hand already. And by so doing, you are begotten by the Spirit. Born into the family of God. Let's quickly see another one. First Corinthians chapter 3. Somebody says it's getting better here. I just want to establish something quickly because you can't go further, farther, achieving your goals, especially with God, if you are not begotten by the Spirit. And tonight, I see a new you. Amen. I say tonight, I see a new you. Amen. I say tonight, I see God doing a work in your life. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let, let's go back to where we are coming from. John chapter 3. Let's go there. John chapter 3. Do I say, yeah, John chapter 3. Let's finish it quickly. Before I move into something else. I just read verse 5. Say, verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now listen. For you to say you are a candidate of the kingdom, you must be born by what? By water. What is that water? And now you understand. Talk to me. What is the water? The word. And what again? The spirit of God. Which means they must be involved in your being born into this new family. Okay? Number C. Look at number uh, verse 6. It said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit I like that. Did you see it? Read it for me. If you had everybody read yours for me. John chapter 3 verse 6. You see, we were all born of the flesh through our parents. You know whether they married our mothers or not, whether they're just boyfriend or girlfriend, it doesn't really matter. You were born on here, born into this world already. But for you to be a child of God, you got to be born of the Spirit of God. You cannot remain the same when that happened. Say, so Bishop, what are you trying to say to me? Because the Bible says that which is born of the flesh is fleshly. That is why you do what you do in the flesh. But when you are born of the spirit, it's higher. Yes, sir. You start becoming spiritual. Start behaving like your father. Your father God. You say, Bishop, I don't understand. It. Can you still explain it? Let me give you another scripture. It will help us. Are you ready? 2 Corinthians 5.17. Go there quickly. The reason why a lot of people in church are not overcoming, they are not winning in life, is because they don't understand this concept. Are you there? Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. Anybody there already? Make sure you see it, honey. Read it for me. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse, 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 verse 17. It should be this way. Just look for it. If you are there, read it for me. I want to go. If any man be, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things shall become new. Now listen to me. Can you read that your translation for me again? I like that. What is that sister? Read it for me again. Listen to this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. That is what it means. Because the moment you are born of the spirit of God. The old has come. And the new life has come. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No, understand that. Understand that. Understand that. The old is gone. The old authorities can no longer control you. Manipulate you. Why? It is gone. And the new life has taken over. That is what we call it new life. New life. All this thing that you are explaining, all this why, is to teach you how you can start reading as a champion. If this has not happened in your life, and you are just being religious, nothing changes in your destiny. It is good to be motivated. 
But if you are not born again, you can't go much with motivation. Somebody say amen. amen. It's the truth. Because that which is born of the spirit is spiritual. Except you are born of the spirit. Now, I'm just showing you how it will happen. One God to receive Jesus. He said, Bishop Frank, now understand. Born of the flesh is flesh. Born of the spirit is spirit. Now, what can truly be born of water and of the spirit of God? And I just told you how that can happen. You got to receive Jesus with all your heart. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Say, I'm knocking. If anyone will open the door of his heart. And I come in. Jesus said, I will sup with that person. And the person will sup with me. Which means, I will catapult you from this lower realm to a spiritual realm. Where I feast and enjoy meal with you. There are things you don't understand before. But the moment you are born of the spirit of God. God becomes your instructor, becomes your teacher, becomes everything to you. Amen. When people teach nonsense, you'll be able to know this person is talking nonsense. Why? By the spirit. You know things others don't know. Now, a few minutes to go. I just hope I have more 10 days to be preaching. That's how I feel. Because certain things got to be understood for them to work. It will not work if you don't have understanding. Certain things will never work for an ignorant person. Till you understand what you have. The Bible says my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. But when you know what you have, you can say, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I like what Ali Kulela said the first day. He said, when you get to that point where you start reigning, you sit down. You say, Satan, get out. He will go. Get out. I bind you. You don't, you don't doubt your prayers. Why? Because you know of whom you belong to. Where you are coming from. And the moment you are born again, you are seated with him in high, in heavenly places. And that's another level. The moment you are born again of the spirit, you start sitting in heaven. I'm not trying to go to heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. The moment you are born again, your seat of authority changes. You are not just somebody trying to make it on earth. You are already seated with Jesus in heavenly places. You understand that? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. See it, please, because I'm closing. I'm already seeing that I can't. I can, I can. <laughs> the time is to our favor tonight. Are you there? Ephesians chapter. Apostle Paul said, if any man be in Christ, it's a new species. The old has gone. Behold, the new has come. Are you there? Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 5 and 6. If you are there, make a joyful noise in their house. <laughs> People go into captivity because they don't have teaching priests. Ephesians chapter 2. Somebody read verse 5 for me. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Verse 6. And has raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There are two together you find there. He said he raised you up together with him. Which means when Jesus died, you died with him. He died because of your sins. He didn't die because he was a criminal. It was your sin that made him die on the cross of Calvary. He was dying your death. He was paying your price. So when he died, you died with him. And when God was raising him, he raised you up with him. Amen. Not only 
wasn't just raising you up to put you in the sky. He made you sit with him. Where? In heaven. So there is a heaven. There is a place called heaven. When God raised Jesus, he raised those who will believe in him. All over the world. So where are true believers right now? They are seated with Jesus. Where? In heavenly places. Some of us don't know that. That is why Satan still has power over you. Because of your ignorance. Where are you seated right now? I know you say I'm seated in Hebrew theater. That is why I like the man of God who was teaching. He said something about physical. Though spiritual but we, there's a mandate he said though we are spiritual the mandate is what physical somebody say I'm spiritual the moment you are born again you are seated with him in heavenly places now because you are seated with him Jesus God raised him from the dead you are so seated with God now you can hear the voice of the spirit like never before When God speaks, you know the voice speaking. When Satan speaks, you know the voice speaking. Don't confuse the voice of the devil to the voice of God. When you keep hearing the voice, you are dying now. You are dying now. You are dying now. It's the devil speaking. God will never talk like that. When you hear a voice that says, you will never prosper. You will never prosper. No matter what you do, you will never prosper. You will never be able to make it. Who is talking? It's the devil. All you have to do if you are a child of God say Satan in the name of Jesus I rebuke you. I am a prosperous child of God. Find a scripture that supports what you say. Argue your case with that word and keep winning. If you go to law court in the natural if you can't speak you hire a lawyer. Is that not true? And the lawyer will speak on your behalf to defend you. The state will have their lawyer you will have your lawyer. Whoever talk where well wins the case. Is that not true? And no, no. Ask David and Goliath. Goliath thought because he was just very big and he had been fighting well from his youth. He had the right to defeat the Israelites. For 40 days, the Israelites, they were afraid. But when David came, he was not born again, but he was anointed. How do I say he was not born again, but he was anointed. What is the difference between us and Moses? We are higher than Moses, uh, David, because we are begotten by God. We are like Jesus. Okay? He spoke from the seat of the anointing that he was having. I said, You are coming to defy the armies of the Lord today. I'll come against you and I'll feed your body to the best of the earth. And they might laugh. Say, look at you, refrat. Look at how you are smelling. You, I'll just tear you. Israel, can't you bring somebody better by bringing a little boy here? He undermined the boy. But God has anointed the boy to win. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When you are born again of God, you are anointed of God. Is the truth. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And David went there and said, You uncircumcised Philistines. The man started doing, You mean? How did he know I'm, I'm circumcised? <laughs> Because naturally, the Philistines, they are not circumcised people. They are not in a covenant relationship with God that circumcised their children eight days old. That is common sense. And you dare come against God's people? Who gave you the impetus to come? David has the audacity to represent God. And I see you, the audacity will rest on you to represent God in this wicked world. And that was it. And David... Spirit of God told David, take the catapult, aim it, and I will direct it. He aimed it at the fool Goliath, that is a big fool, and God channeled the, channeled the stone 
and he located somewhere there. Bam! And the stone sank into his head and the man landed. Just a stone. When the Holy Spirit takes what you have, it becomes something else. He will use your words to beat down the devil. When the moment you are born into this family, you become dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Maybe in your family, a lot of people have been dying prematurely. It stops today. I don't hear a good amen. I say stop today. If you are the priest in that house, you can stop all the devil from wasting your family away. That is what David did. He represented the whole armies of Israel. He took away their shame. You are going to take away the shame of your family. Yeah. It's the truth. God is going to use you to turn things around in that family. If nobody ever prospered in that family because of you, prosperity has come in. Yeah. I release prosperity. Yeah. I release plenty. Yeah. I release abundance. Yeah. I release healing. Yeah. I release sufficiency. I release blessing. In some family, people don't marry in time. When suitors come, they look at them and they run away. The moment you are born again, things are turned around. If that was your case till now, I change it in the name of Jesus. Amen. David went in there, used the little catapult he used in chasing away animals, fling it on the idiots. And God, the Holy Spirit, took the stone and humiliated Goliath. He had no knife. He had no sword. He simply got closer to Goliath, took his sword and cut off his head. Those who want your head to be cut off this year, before the end of this year, they will die miserable deaths. Those who said you will never succeed in life over their dead body, will anybody from your family succeed? Can I announce to you, this prophet standing here is, truly it will be over their dead body. Amen. You will prosper. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. You will prosper and prosper and prosper and prosper. Amen. You may not know how the riches is going to come. God will rearrange it for you. Amen. Just the way he rearranged it for David. I see the battle is already won on your favor. The Bible says, He that is born of God overcomes the world. The next one I will be capping if God give me the opportunity. He said, This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Which means the moment you are born again, God gives you faith. Let me prove it. I'll close. Romans chapter 12. Verse 3. The moment you are born again, God gives you what? Shout, shout faith. I don't hear you. Say it very well. The moment you are born again of God, God gives you what? Faith. Five letter word. F A I T H. Why Satan is left with fear? You used to be afraid before. Fear disappears, and God gives you the spirit of what? Faith. Anybody in Romans chapter 12, verse 3? Read it for me. Shout it if you are there. That is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. So everyone who have given their life to Jesus, God have given them faith. Faith to beat the devil down. So everybody in the family of God, God have given them what? Faith. Do you see there? He said God have dealt to everyone. The same measure of faith. Which means if there are 20 people born again the same day, God give them all of them the same measure of faith. You can grow in faith. You can limit your faith. This is what my wife was teaching today. So profound. And 
I was just jumping inside my heart and I wish everybody was hearing her. Now, you can have what you call weak faith. Opposite of weak is what? Strong. So if you can have weak faith, you can have strong faith. We call it levels of faith. But the moment you give your life to Jesus, all of us, we are given the same measure of faith. No matter how God loved me, honey, he won't give me more than he gives you. So he gives you the same measure, measure, the same measure, the same measure, the same measure, the same measure. Whatever you do from that little measure you have, it will cause it to grow or diminish. Amen. So that is why you see some people, they make their bone again, they run away, they don't go to church, they don't keep hearing the word of God, and they start dying. They wonder why. But I gave my life to Jesus some time ago. Why is it that I'm not growing? No, you stop feeding the baby. Give birth to a baby and stop giving the baby the breast milk. The baby dies. The moment a woman is pregnant, the breasts are heavy. It's not heavy for the woman. God is not saying, start sucking your own breasts. It's not heavy for the man that is the husband. It's heavy because the baby coming need that fresh meal cooked in heaven. Amen. Full balanced diets all encompassing the breasts. So that is why the moment the baby is born, boo is crying. You already give the breast boom and the baby suck and suck and suck. After a few days, the baby is growing. Is that not true? The word of God is like that. And when you don't feed yourself, you start dying. It will look as if you are in an entity. So levels of faith. Weak faith, little faith, growing faith. When you feed yourself, where you be growing. Look at that small boy now. 50, 15 years old, eh? Uh -uh. And there are men here. There are 20, 40, 30. All they can testify is I'm a man. If you are a man and you are spiritually deficient, you are, you are sick. If you are a woman, you are just big. All you know is how to showcase your body. And you are spiritually blind. You are sick. You are very sick. Somebody like me, I might use a little small boy who knows God than using a fool. It's the truth. And that is why when God wanted to anoint a king... He, he came to the, the Jesus family. He was looking for somebody. God always looks for people whose heart are right. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. And the big boys thought we got to be the one apart from who else. God rejected all of them because God is not looking at the outward appearance. Don't think God will be looking at your height, your degrees, your education. Forget it. I said, people like me, I don't look at people because they have money. To hell with your money. If you can't serve God very well, to hell with your money. The God we serve can open doors of financial prosperity to you. Only one day, he will rearrange your finances forever. If you know him. And he, the prophet of God came to that family. He said, not this one. Not this one. Seven guys were rejected. Somebody say seven. seven. Uh, and the man of God said, uh, if God, he brought me here. He told me to anoint somebody. He told me he would show me the person. If you have rejected the seven guys that I'm seeing, I'm in trouble. He said, do you still have any other child? He said, there is one small boy taking care of the sheep. He must be smelling. The man of God said, I'm not going anywhere till he come. I'm not going anywhere. I will stand till the young man come. When he saw the young man coming, the spirit of God told him, this is he, anoint him. This is the one, anoint him. He's the one I've chosen to be a king. Somebody shout hallelujah. I see God anointing you differently tonight. Please don't, don't rush to leave here because the next few minutes is going to be Holy Ghost quake here. I'm just introducing you to see to be born of the spirit is actually the height of the height. 
Because your life begins. Your future begins. Your destiny begins. Everything about you starts falling into place. They will fall into place. Everything about you. That will encourage you to go forward. No matter how the devil tries to stop you. Tonight he's going to hit the rock. Are you hearing me somebody? I just want you to see what you have. You are seated with him in heavenly places. You are not trying to go to heaven. You are already a candidate of heaven. You think I'm trying to go to heaven? No. I'm trying to join my father to win souls all over the world. That is my passion. And they asked again yesterday, what do you really want? What I want now is to win souls. Not looking for a car. I will keep having them. Not looking for a house. No, they will come. I just want to become a, a, a vehicle that God uses to depopulate hell and populate heaven. That's my heartbeat right now. Because Chelete will follow us and overtake us. Why? Because we are focused. We are seeking first his kingdom. And it's righteous in Matthew chapter 6, 33. He said, all these things that God knows you need, I will give it to you. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So where are you seated right now? Amen. Where are you seated right now? Amen. And how do you live this new life by faith? Amen. Now, let me conclude by saying, South Africa, what type of currency do we have? We use what? Rents. Zimbabwe, which currency do we have? Zim dollar. America, which currency do we have? In Great Britain, which currency do we have? In Nigeria, which currency do we have? Uh, in Japan, which currency do we have? Yeah. I forgot, I was in China recently, I forgot the name of their money. Now, when you belong to the kingdom of God, which currency do we have? Somebody shall faint. Uh -huh. That is why God gave it to us. So that you can move from glory to glory, from power to power, from revelation to revelation. So you have currency too. Spiritual currency. It flows. It can bring in power to your house. The woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment by faith. And power left Jesus and destroyed the sickness in that woman. A sickness of 12 years died a premature death. Why? Because somebody operated by faith. Amen. Tonight, you are not going back to that with that problem you came with. Amen. You are leaving it here forever. Amen. I don't hear your good amen. amen. Faith. Faith is a sheet. Also, can I give you that? Ephesians chapter 6. I'll close with that. Chapter 6, verse 16. Don't go yet, honey, till I pray for you. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Obey the bishop. Faith, Ephesians 6, verse what? 16. Are you there? I just want you to see this and I'll be praying. Oh my God, I can feel the anointing here. My sister, can you just come here quickly? Come, come, come. Drop your back. I need Osha to stay at her back. Just feel the anointing all over here. There are three things you want God to do for you. Is that true, man? There are three major things you want God to do for you. Is that true? Huh? I know you say, but three major. There are others. Lift up your hand. Somebody stop at your hand and say, receive your miracle. Receive I don't hear you. I say, I don't hear you. One more time. Look at me. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Say that one more time. I receive it. Again. I receive with it. With all your heart. With all my heart. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. That is it. That is it. That is it. My sister, you stand up quickly. Are you in Ephesians chapter 6? Yes. You, you, you. Come quickly. Yeah, you can come, 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 come. Don't go yet, my sister. Just stand over here. Just felt like laying hands on some people because there's anointing of faith released. 
Just play something very cool for me. Come over here, honey. You want God to do something major for you. That is too light for God to do. As I speak it now, he will be uncomfortable till he does it. Lift up your hand. Receive that miracle. Yes, take it. It's yours. I give it to you. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Just stand there. Come over here. Somebody give club offering to Jesus in the house. What do you... Come and help me here quickly. Just put your hand on her tummy. There is somebody here. You have a moving object in your tummy. This thing I've been having now for seven years. Come here quickly. For seven years. Is it for seven years? You don't remember. Just come quickly. Lift up your hand. Somebody shall go. Out of her. Get out, you serpent spirit. Out of her. I rebuke you. Come out of her body. In the name of Jesus. That is it. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus. That is it. Let it go. Go, 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 go. I rebuke you. I stay in my office. Go, 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 go. Get out of her. Get out of her. Get out of her. Get out of her. I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. Never you come back here. Get out! I destroy you in this body. In the name of Jesus. Out! Can't stay here anymore. Somebody give blood of into Jesus. He's gone. Pick her up. Just leave her there. Congratulations. Just leave her. Leave her. The power of God is all over her. There is somebody else I want to pray for. You are engaged to a man. I know you have been blessed by this powerful message. If you enjoy what you've been hearing and would like to place order for our DVDs or CDs, or you need prayers, counseling, deliverance, and you want to talk to the man of God, you can call us on 083-480-7992. Or visit us at uh, Unit 9, 2600 Andrews Bull, along Abed Lituli Drive, Mabato. Or if you're in Lightingberg or Isose, you can just be with us. God bless you. Till we see you again next week. Bye-bye.